Hello and welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar and today we're gonna be talking about a legend of the past. This is the Snipetron Vandal. With a mastery lockout of only 5, this is one ideal starter sniper rifle, at least from my point of view. You can farm it from invasions or if you want to spare yourself the hassle, you can simply pay up to a maximum of 50 plat, I recommend 40, from the trade chat and get a full set. That being said, please keep in mind that my builds and my guides usually take a more new player friendly approach, simply because there's a lot of information here that normally doesn't get covered and I really feel like I should. So veterans of the game, please bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Snipetron Vandal. Firstly, let's check out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. One very important aspect to any sniper is the scope and the, well, graphics on the scope. You'll see that the Snipetron Vandal has two levels of zoom. You can zoom in by pressing your middle mouse button, that's your alternative fire. Again, these are the default settings. It has the first level of zoom, which is 2.5x, and you'll see you'll get plus 30% headshot damage, and you have 6.8, uh, 6.0x, which will give you 50% Headshot damage. Now all sniper rifles have a combo system, somewhat similar to the melee combo system. To make it perfectly simple, you want to keep it up and as high as you can to get more damage. So you see if I shoot this guy once, nothing happens. Shot combo 1, shot combo 2, and there we go, we're on 1.5x and you will see there is a combo decay. Look under my crosshairs. The more you shoot, the more combo you will get, and again, you want to keep this one up. To start the combo with the Snipetron Vandal, because this is personalized depending on each and every sniper, you want to hit free shots, and then the combo will start. You also have a combo decay, again, on each and every sniper rifle, and in the case of the snipe, uh, Snipetron Vandal, the combo decay is 2 seconds, so wait 2 seconds, it will drop one, you see that, 13, wait another 2 seconds, 12, and so on and so forth. More combo, again, means more damage, so you want to keep this one up, if at all possible. That being said, let's check out the fire rate and the recoil. I'm mashing my button right now. So as you can see, the fire rate doesn't perfect, perfectly line up to the recoil. You gotta, you can't make full use of this weapon's fire rate, you gotta wait a little for the recoil kinda to set a little bit. So you gotta keep this one in mind when taking into account fire rate mods, and of course, recoil as well. And well, that's pretty much it. Let's jump into its base stats so we can have a better look. First of all, accuracy, accuracy is 13.3. This is standard for sniper rifles, don't worry about it. This is perfectly normal. Critical chance is pretty high at 28%. Not bad, it would have been better at 30, but 28% is going to be good enough. Critical multiplier is 2.0x, which again is not really all that high, but we can make do with it. Falloff is standard for snipers, this is the basic falloff for sniper rifles. Uh, the fire rate, as you saw, is 2, which again, because of the recoil on this weapon, you can't fully make use of it. Magazine size is actually pretty good, 6, with a reload of 2.0. The magazine side is very good and so is the reload time, from my point of view at least. Punch through is 3.0. Now this is what the Snipetron Vandal has extra that the other guys, let's call it like that, don't have. Punch through. 3 meters worth of punch through, meaning that, especially in lower level content, and not only, you're gonna be able to hit a target 3 meters behind your initial target. That means you can chain headshots together beautifully with this one, and no other sniper rifle by default has this much punch through. I absolutely love it just because of this. This position is 4 out of 5. That means that this weapon is not very popular, at least not currently. And well, for good reason, there are other options which are a whole lot stronger than the Snipetron Vandal. But I just simply love this weapon. Status chance is 16%, which is very low, but then again, when it comes to sniper rifles, you will see that most, if not all, if I am not missing something, are based on crit. They are all crit weapons. What a sniper should do is kill a target in a shot, maximum of 2. And the damage types, the main damage type you'll see that is Puncture. Uh, it would have been great if it was a slash sniper rifle, then it wouldn't really be a sniper rifle if it was. In any case, mod capacity is 60 and you get this one by jumping into actions and installing an Orokin Catalyst. Orokin Catalyst can be found in alerts, invasions, or if you're really lucky, from the daily sortie. And yes, I know most of you know this, but I feel like I should cover it. Anyway, you will see the number 5 over here, upright. This means that my weapon has been formatted a total of 5 times. 
However, for the build I'm recommending you, you don't need the Forma 5 times. You should be able to get away with 4. Now, let's start putting on some mods, shall we? And the first thing we always do with any weapon is add flat damage. What do we got for damage and rifles? Well, serration. Serration, fully maxed out, will add 165 damage. Now, when it comes to damage mods, you might come across this one, heavy caliper. No. <laughs> no, not on sniper rifles. Not on sniper rifles, not on bows. This one works well on some assault rifles. Not on a sniper, which is based what ideally you want to do with it is basically do headshot damage so no we're gonna stay clear of heavy caliber give it a shot if you want to but i honestly do not recommend it as for flat damage that's all we're adding second on the list as per the usual multi-shot and the uh multi-shot mod for rifles is split chamber keep in mind that uh, rifle and sniper rifle mods are kind of like mix so this is a sniper rifle but you can put rifle mods on 90 percent multi-shot with split chamber clear to the point of course it increases our status chance by 16 uh, from 16 to 28 percent and being multi-shot increases the damage we're not gonna stop there with multi-shot, we're gonna add a mod that I honestly love and everybody should have access to, Vigilante Armaments. Another 60% multi-shot, which in the case of a rifle, is a bigger deal than you might think. In the case of shotguns, which you have the shotgun mod for multi-shot gives you 120%, but split chamber only gives you 90%. So you see, Vigilante Armaments becomes all the more powerful. For now, we're gonna leave it on, you also have that 5% chance to increase critical hits, however, considering how many shots we're firing, that kinda looks loses most of its value. You're still gonna see rank ups in crits, but not all that often. Very well, so we got our damage, we got our multi-shot, what is next? Well, it's a sniper, it's a crit weapon, so we're gonna add crit critical chance. The crit chance mod for rifle is called, uh, called point strike and it will add a whopping 150% critical chance, which bumps up our crit chance from 28% to a massive 70%. There are other sniper rifles which can go higher, but the point is 70% is definitely a solid amount to have. Should we go further with critical chance? Mm, you have the option of critical delay. Now, how do I put this one? Critical delay normally on most weapons is a terrible idea. On this one, not really. Remember when I pointed out that I can't fully make use of the fire rate because of the recoil? If I put critical delay on, it will fix that issue. So for this weapon in particular, considering its recoil, considering you want to hit the same point every time, critical delay is actually a smart idea. But we're not going to do that. No, <laughs> you can do it. However, critical delay on the Vandal is not, uh, not a bad idea. For now, we're going to keep going as it is. And after we got our critical chance, of course, we want our critical damage. Oops. Never mind that mod. We're going to talk about it later. Vital Sense is the critical damage mod for uh, rifles and we're gonna sl slot it in I think that's really, that's better a hundred and twenty percent critical damage and you will see that our multiplier jumped up from 2.0 to 4.4 a lot of critical damage here uh, it would be roughly about this point when you should be adding elemental damage depending on who you fight now let me rewind a little bit everything against uh, heavily armored targets such as the grenier you want to do corrosive damage against the uh, corpus faction you want to do gas which will bypass their huge shields entirely or if you want to just nuke down their shields you should build magnetic against infested well against infested to be honest mostly everything works but i just recommend flat out fire against them ah, it works just fine and the infested are rather easy to kill now there's one more target we should be taking into consideration. Currently sniper rifles are extremely used against Eidolons on Cetus. If you guys haven't gotten there yet, yet you will. And against the Eidolon you will be wanting to use radiation damage. So that's a really quick tutorial. In our case we're gonna assume we're fighting the Grenier because for some reason everybody wants to fight the Grenier because well they're kind of the toughest. So we're gonna be needing corrosive, correct. So electricity and Toxin, that is the combination that makes corrosive. When it comes to adding to a rifle, um, the elemental damage mods, you do have a couple of options. You can go for a flat 90 mod, like Stormbringer, or you can go for the 60-60 mods. Just like shotguns, rifles have 60-60 mods, just like pistols and so on and so forth. Now, it's a bit of a trade-off because you lose damage, however, you do gain that status chance. In testing, I have tried both combinations with status and flat-out damage. 
It is simply not a good idea to build this weapon for high status. It's simply not as consistent as I would have liked and usually the 90 mods offer better results. And let me make a quick note here, if you have prime versions of any of the mods that I recommend, then by all means please go on ahead and use your prime versions. So we add a Stormbringer and we are now gonna add a little bit of Toxin as well. Infected Clip is the 90 mod, Malignant Force is the 60-60 uh, mod, these are not expensive mods, you can get it for 10, 15, Hi, uh, the Electricity one is a bit more expensive because it's from Nilegar Eris, but it's not as expensive as Shell Shock, so it shouldn't break the bank. In any case, I tested all combinations with 90 mods and 60-60 mods and half-half, uh, still the 90 mods preferred uh, performed better. As for a last option, to a mod, well, this is when things become a little bit tricky. You can go for critical delay if you so desire. Now, I love critical delay on this weapon simply because my recoil then lines up to my fire rate a whole lot better and I'm kind of lazy and I don't have to re-aim, but it's not necessarily the best choice in the world. And here comes people screaming at me, HAMMER SHOT! <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is a fairly common mod, 10 plat, maximum 50, and it will add critical damage and status chance. This is definitely an option you can go for. Another option you can go for, and again I hear the screams in the background, is Hunter Munitions. What? Hunter Munitions? Yes, Hunter Munitions will add a 30% chance to apply sta slash status to an enemy on a critical hit. Now we do have a fairly high critical hit chance, however we don't fire a lot of bullets, so we're not gonna get that many slashes. But when they do proc, oh my god, it's so glorious. So we're gonna actually gonna be going with Hunter Munitions for our initial test. Then we're gonna be changing to Hammer Shot. Then we're gonna be changing to Critical Delay. Because I'll be honest with you, in testing and in everyday scenarios, there's not much between these three combinations. If I was to pick a favorite, favorite please don't scream at me, it was gonna be Hammer Shot. In all honesty, this proved the most consistent. I love critical delay, but it's only 48% crit chance. If I put it on, 83%, which is good, but I just feel like it gives too little. I put this one on simply because it's a good fit for the Vandal and nothing else. But for now, let me use Hunter Munitions before you scream at me. Very well, uh, let's spawn in some enemies. Uh, those were the Bombards, but Bombards are easier to kill than what I want to do. Actually, we're going to be spawning in Corrupted heavy gunners. One side note, uh, I spawn in corrupted heavy gunners simply because they are a bit more tanky, they have more health and uh, more armor than regular heavy gunners. So let's simulate, there we go. Now I'm gonna try to hit this one so the punch through affects and doesn't affect. If I hit from here the punch through should not affect. So let's take some range from these guys, we're gonna do a 6 head headshot. One, there's the slash status. And look at the damage proccing away at him. Not bad, huh? It was just one shot, and it's a 30% chance on a crit. Here's another, there's another slash. Now, if I line up from the front and make use of what I love this weapon for, it's punch through, you will see different things. You see that? They're all getting slashed. That punch through is absolutely amazing. Yes, that was two kills, one shot. And these are level 115, sorry that I said 110, 115 heavy gunners. Look as at what this weapon is doing to them. And I wasn't even in a hurry, I was just trying to outline that Hunter Munition actually does work, even though it's not super consistent. If this Snipe Drone Vandal can do that to level 115 corrupted heavy gunners, then I have no beef with it. It can be my end game weapon if nobody else wants it. Yes, when it comes to snipers, there are so many options on the table and we can talk about the Rubico. Yes, it's kick ass. We can talk about the Lanka. We can talk about the Victus Prime. And I have them and I use them and I know the differences. But for a new player, I still think the Snipe Drone Vandals is absolutely kick ass. This is what I would recommend. It just feels good looks good, and to be honest, it's comfortable, I like that. Vulcar Wraith would be great too, however, that one you can only get from Battle Kidir, and if you wanted to get it from the trade chat, it's like 180, 200 plat, and I don't like to recommend expensive weapons when you can get as good or better result with something like this. Now, let's swap out Hunter Munitions, and let's introduce Hammer Shot, and let's see the difference in test results. Honestly, I wasn't expecting Hunter Munitions to perform as good as it did on this weapon. Not considering how many shots we do. And I'm just gonna go straight with the punch through. That was two shots. 
He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Now, please keep in mind that my combo count hasn't gone down. That's a big chunk of damage. You see that? 2.5x is going down now. 29, 2.5. What we did with Hunter Munitions was a cold start. This is, uh, I guess you would refer to this one as a warm sh start, something like that. So we did get that uh, added damage from uh, our combos. The point is, both offer somewhat similar results. And to be honest, again, my personal favorite still is Hammer Shot because simply I want that big damage. Okay, I'm a crit whore, sue me. But I do love, and I honestly think that the most consistent results out of all the free options for the last uh, slot, at least my free options, would be Hammer Shot. Want to try it with Critical Delay for the hell of it? Absolutely. We'll do that as well. I don't know if our combo counter reset it. Yes, I believe this will be a cold start. Because of the punch through on this weapon, also your combo counter climbs extremely quickly as well. Because when we hit them in a line like this, you're going to be able to hit multiple targets. So therefore, more shots. Look at that combo. 46 already. And that is with Critical Delay. From my point of view, no matter how many targets I kill, no matter how many friends I call in and tell, and tell them to spawn higher level enemies, so I see the difference. There is really such a small difference between these three options, so use whatever you prefer. In all honesty, the most powerful of all of them is Hunter Munitions. With this setup on, it can do 12.5k procs. Uh, on the bleed. However, it is simply not that consistent and that's what gets me worried about using Hunter Munitions, but it can work. Now, that being said, let's switch to my main build. I also have a Riven for this one and let's see how this one looks. Now, my Riven has cold damage and 210% critical chance. It's a high amount again because of the Riven uh, disposition. After 44 rolls, this is the best I could get. It's definitely not ideal, not the best Riven in the world, but it's not completely garbage either. So it's definitely worthy to have on your rifle. And by the way, considering how many people use the Snipetron Vandal, you can also get Rivens for a fairly low cost. However, Rivens are not exactly new prayer friendly. The I think the minimum mastery for a Snipetron Vandal is something around 9. And the Snipetron Vandal itself is mastery rank 5. So we did slot in uh, the uh, Riven and we also slotted in Argon Scope. Now Argon Scope was not a part of my original build, what I recommended to you guys, because this one is stupid expensive. You will be able to get it when the event comes around again, but right now on the trade chat, even if you haggle and daggle, you, it is impossible to get this one under 200 plat unless you're really lucky. A fair price, a normal price for Argon Scope right now is 250%. But for my main build and for the sake of presentation, we're gonna go with Argon Scope, which on headshot will give us 135% crit chance while aiming for 9 seconds. And of course, the uh, Riven as well. And we're gonna test it against the same enemies. Again, I wanna make use of that punch through because I have it and the other guys don't have it, so why shouldn't I make use of it? Look at that. Yes, Rivens make things better. And normally, like I told you guys, I don't think Rivens, and I still don't think Rivens are necessary, I honestly don't. But in the case of the Snipetron Vandal, at least it's not expensive. It's not gonna cost you an arm and a leg to get a Riven. And well, as you can see, this weapon, with or without a Riven, from my point of view at least, is endgame ready. So if you guys want to get yourself one sniper and carry it over through the entire game, yes, there are better options, but the Snipetron Vandal can still handle it, at least in my opinion. If you guys got any feedback for me, by all means, leave it in the comment section down below. As always, my name is Ben Lazar. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. And as well, if you want to see a specific weapon build, in the comment section down below. I give you my word that I will read all the comments posted. And I simply can't end the video without mentioning one additional option when it comes to beginner sniper rifles. And that is the Rubico. Yes, it's one mastery rank higher. So Snipe Tron Vandal is 5, Rubico is 6. It's got a slightly higher critical chance of 30%, but where the Rubico truly shines is in the critical multiplier of 3.0 and Snipetron Vandal only 2.0. However, the Snipetron Vandal has that amazing punch through, which I love, which is why still I use the Snipetron Vandal over the Rubico. But in any case, we're getting subjective. Thank you guys for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. And I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye! 
As per the usual, the first thing we're gonna do is check out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. But for that, I should really unequip the mods, shouldn't I? Hey, boy. Good job, Lazar. You suck officially. I know, I know. 